Pretty cool, right? I'm gonna show you exactly how I made these, step by step. I call it Holy Cornhole. These are premium boards and I'm selling them at a premium price. So I've added some bells and whistles in addition to the rotating target. So I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of what I did to these boards and then we'll get into the build. Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. If you already build cornhole boards, you might not ever decide to add a motor to it, but you still might get some tips on how to make yours better by watching how I do it. And full disclosure, this is not my invention. I actually got this idea from Matthew Peach about six months ago. He made a video on how to make these as well, and I took his idea and ran with it. So this is just how I do it. I'll add a link to Matthew Peach's video in my description as well. And like he says, if you're someone who likes plans in the hands, he has plans available on his website. So go check out Matthew Peach after you finish watching this video. It's a mitered frame so you don't see the end of any boards. And likewise, the plywood is inset into the frame so that you don't see the edge of the plywood. I plugged the screw holes with wooden plugs, stainless steel carriage bolts that shouldn't rust. Both boards have a scoreboard built right in so you don't have to remember your score. On the leg assembly, there's a built-in drink holder that'll hold a foam can koozie. I've added carrying handles because they're a little heavy and it makes them easier to carry around. And this is the first time I've gotten to use my new logo. What do you think? Right now it's running on battery, but I want to show you the difference between battery and when you add power by plugging it in. It's quite a bit more powerful, a little noisier too, but you have that option. As usual, I've added links in the description to all the items that I use in this build, so let's get into it. This build begins with a standard cornhole board. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that show how to build a cornhole board, so I'm not going to go into how to build the frame. But the basic dimensions you need to know are that the playing surface is 24 inches wide by 48 inches long. I'm going to cruise through these steps pretty quickly, so if you ever feel like you missed a step, just pause and rewind and go back and watch the section that you missed if you need to. I like to start by laying out the center points for the small target hole and the large rotating circle on the plywood before it gets joined to the frame. Both circles are centered widthwise, so 12 inches from each edge. The crosshairs will go at 9 inches down from the top for the target hole, which has a 6 inch diameter. And the spinning circle is centered at 15 inches down from the top and will have a diameter of 20 inches. And I'm doing this layout on the back side of the board because I don't want to drill a hole into the playing surface. Next, I'm going to cut the target hole. There are several ways you can do this. You can use a big expensive and dangerous 6 inch hole saw, or you could use a jigsaw. But my preferred method for making a perfect circular hole is to use a trim router with a circle cutting jig. For this, I remove the plastic plate and replace it with a piece of hardboard. This will be a 6 inch diameter circle, so the center screw will need to be 3 inches from the outside of the router bit. I advance the bit to about half the thickness of the plywood, not all the way through. Then I'll draw out my 20 inch hole with a super sophisticated precision compass that I found in the bargain bin at Brett's Basement Woodshop. And then I'll finish the cut on the small circle with the jigsaw, being careful not to get too close to the outer edge. This will give us a pretty jagged hole, but then we'll come back with the trim router and a flush trim bit to smooth that out. To cut the big hole, I'm making another circle cutting jig, this time for the jigsaw. I'm just using some scrap MDF trim board cut to at least 24 inches long. Then I just attach a few scrap pieces to fit snugly around the base of the jigsaw with the blade removed. Then once that's glued and tacked in place, I put the blade back in and make my curve cut. On the circle I marked out, I make a starter hole just big enough for the jigsaw blade to pass through. And then I'll make a mark 10 inches down from the blade and drive in a screw. And then keeping my pressure down and forward, I cut out my large circle. If you feel I've earned it, could you give this video a thumbs up? That way it can spread to more good folks like yourself. What I didn't show is that I mounted the plywood to the frame before moving on to my next step, which is centering the circle we cut out back in its hole. For this, I'm just using some brad nails as spacers. It's important to get this centered, otherwise when it spins, it'll be lopsided. 
Then I find the center point of a square four by four block of plywood that I actually cut out of the small circle from the target hole. And then I can line up that center hole of the block with the same center hole that was made when we cut out the big circle. Next, I add a couple more screws so I can line that back up after adding glue on the backside of this mounting block. We're gonna use the forks from the rotisserie kit, but the prongs are way too long, so I'm gonna cut those down to about one inch. A metal cutting blade on the jigsaw would work just as well, if not better, now that I think of it. The square stock for the barbecue motor has a pointed end. We'll use that to register on the center hole before securing the fork with the thumb screw. If we had centered the fork first, it would shift the square rod off of center when we tightened down the thumb screw. We need that rod to be mounted in the exact center because that's the axle of this wheel. Then I tap on the fork to make an impression in the wood so I can see where to drill the holes to mount this fork. That's in there pretty tight, but I'm going to use some CA glue to permanently fix it in. Next, we move on to the motor mounting brace. By the way, if you want printed plans for this build, Matthew Peach has them available on his Etsy shop. I'll leave a link in the description. This brace is 21 inches long, which is 24 inches minus the thickness of your frame pieces, and it's just a little wider than the motor. The center hole will be 7 16 inches for the rod to pass through without rubbing. We want as little friction on the hardware as possible. And we'll secure that in place with glue and pocket screws. This motor runs on either two D sized batteries or AC power. Link in the description. To mount it, we need to remove four of the screws and replace them with angle brackets and flat brackets. I made a mark at the top of the cross brace and then I need to add that to the depth of the square drive in the motor to get the proper length for this square stock to get it cut down to size. And I go ahead and cut that with a metal cutting blade on my jigsaw. And then I filed off the sharp edges. I made a mistake here and it came back to bite me later. I forgot to put the brad nail spacers back around the circle before mounting the motor. If I haven't sighted already, it's really important that everything be centered and balanced so the target hole will spin freely without getting hung up or lopsided. If you do get off center, you may need to make adjustments to how the motor is mounted by adding shims or washers. And I just realized I'm missing the scene where I installed the four runners that support the circle from the underside. You can see them here. They're attached at the top, bottom, left, and right, or north, south, east, and west. They're an inch wide and 12 inches long, and they overlap the hole by a half an inch. Anyway, moving on to mounting the legs. I pre-drilled these on the drill press so that the holes would be straight and perpendicular. And then I'm using an eighth inch spacer on the bottom and a quarter inch spacer on the side so the leg has clearance to swing. And then I clamp it in place before drilling a 3 8 inch hole most of the way into the frame, using the leg hole as a drill guide. I'm using a brad point drill bit and I stop when I can see the brad point poke through the other side so I don't blow out the hole and then I finish the hole from the outside to make a nice clean hole for the 3 8 inch stainless steel carriage bolt. The legs are cut oversized to begin with and now we prop the board up so that the top edge is exactly 12 inches from the ground and I swing the leg out over the edge of my work table to mark the length and angle and I'll make that cut over at the miter saw. What I'm showing you here is that I've marked each leg left and right because they might not be identical and it's easy to get them mixed up. Then a quick test fit to make sure that there's no wobble before moving on to cutting and mounting the cross pieces which will make up the drink holders. Because who doesn't enjoy a cold beverage when they're playing holy cornhole? Once I get the right length, I clamp it in place and flip it over to make sure it doesn't bang into the motor. This will double as a protective shield so that the motor doesn't get accidentally knocked out of whack. I added a few wraps of painter's tape to a foam koozie so it would slide in and out easily. That's what she said. A jigsaw is not a precision instrument, so I try to be careful to cut inside the line, and then I take it over to the spindle sander to smooth out the cut and take it to the line for a perfect fit. I had to do a little experimenting to find the right location to mount the drink holder. 
You could simply glue these in place or screw them in from the outside or both, but I'm choosing to use pocket screws. I wouldn't be able to get to the underside of the drink holder with the bottom board in place because the boards are a little close together. So I screwed the bottom board in first and then removed the screws again so I would know where my mounting holes would be and then I'll have access to screw in the drink holder. You may want to wait and mark where to drill your pocket holes once you've gotten the right location of your pieces. This one got a little too close to the edge. Well, what do you think? Is this something you could see yourself building? And let me know too how much you think these should sell for. I haven't added up all that I've put into these, but it's in the hundreds of dollars. The wraps and bags alone were 128 bucks. And I put a lot of time into these to make sure that they look really good and that they function more importantly. I'm not a full-time woodworker yet, I still have a full-time job as a nurse, so I do my woodworking on the side, and this took me about two and a half weeks of my spare time to build these. But I'm really happy with how they turned out, and I think the customer's really gonna love them. I have another video specifically on how I applied these vinyl wraps, and I have a link to that video right over here. Until next time, my friend, be safe and love each other. Holy cornhole. Holy, holy cornhole.